Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Right, thank you for coming today. I am Mark Jewell, a Guilford County school teacher currently serving as president of the North Carolina Association of Educators, the Woo! state's largest public school employee organization. Today I'm joined by other teachers and support professionals from across the state and other public school advocates to call a North Carolina Senate to take up and pass House Bill 13 immediately yes. and to urge our elected leaders to, to make a stronger commitment to our public schools by elevating North Carolina's per pupil funding to at least the national average. We've had thousands of teachers and support community members sign a petition requesting this. Once again, many of our state public school teachers are on edge about whether or not they will have a job at the end of the school year. In recent years, it's been thousands of teacher assistants who've been threatened with losing their jobs. That's right. Yes. Living with this kind of fear and uncertainty is not productive for educators and it's not productive for our students and our public schools and our public school administrators. In last year's budget, the General Assembly approved new class size requirements for kindergarten through third grade. NCAE and our educators are supportive of smaller class sizes, but you can't do it haphazardly and in a way that je jeopardizes the kind of education and the kinds of schools that our students deserve. One that includes a well-rounded and diverse curriculum that meets the needs of all of our students and benefits the whole child. Here, here. What lawmakers did in last year's budget was eliminate school districts' flexibility related to those caps and give them little time and limited resources to meet those requirements. In Wake County alone, it would require 460 teachers, uh, which is equivalent of 12 additional elementary schools. In Durham, 100 new teachers would be needed, and in Johnson County, 85. That doesn't account for the tremendous capital costs that would come with adding additional classroom space. Traditionally, local school districts have used this flexibility to fund arts, music, physical education, and world language teachers. The result of this elimination of the flexibility is that thousands of arts, music, physical education, and world language teachers are in jeopardy of losing their jobs. The Department of Public Instruction says as many as 4,500 teachers could be eliminated this spring. The time for the North Carolina, North Carolina Senate to take up House Bill 13 is to pass it now. School districts and county commissioners are preparing their budgets at this very moment. Our students and our parents and our communities deserve public schools with well-rounded curriculums that can have a dramatic impact on the lives of children. We know that this is just a temporary fix, but it is a critical one. NCAE supports a longer term solution to reaching the goal of small class size while protecting the performing arts, physical education, and world languages, and the visual arts. One way to help alleviate this problem longer term is to make the kind of school investments needed in the first place. Our elected leaders should have a comprehensive plan to elevate North Carolina's per pupil funding to the national average. The state's track record over the past five years has been dismal on this key education investment issue. While the ranking may have improved slightly, 43rd in the country isn't something to brag about. Would you agree? No. And North Carolina continues to fall further behind. In 2011-12, North Carolina was more than $2,300 behind the national average, and now we are projected to be more than $3,000 behind the national average in per pupil spending. Is that the North Carolina way? No! North Carolina's per pupil expenditure is $8,898, and the U.S. average is eleven thousand nine hundred forty three dollars is, is that the north carolina way no if you take inflation into account the total per pupil expenditures are down eight percent since the recession in addition north carolina's textbooks continues to lag behind where it was in the recession 
NCAE is pushing hard on this issue the last two years, and we have made progress, but we are still about $25 million short on textbook funding prior to pre-recession levels. Now, mind you, this is at a time when we have probably 50 more thousand public school students in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Also, the number of personal per pupil student in traditional public schools has fallen more than 10% since the recession. North Carolina has 6% fewer teachers and 31% fewer teacher assistants, mm -hmm. as we have a population of 1.5 million students. This is all at the time when we have had several years of $500 million surpluses mm -hmm. in the General Assembly Reserves and major tax cuts for corporations and the wealthy. Mm -hmm. Now the Senate wants to cut taxes again for corporations. Mm -hmm. their, tax, uh, their tax cut plan is now a billion dollars. It's about priorities, friends and we should be prioritizing our classrooms yes. Yes. and not yes. our boardrooms. Yes. 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 Would you agree that our students deserve better than this? Yes! Let's give North Carolina students the schools that they deserve. Yes. Let's invest, invest in our public school classrooms and give North Carolina the schools our students deserve by raising per pupil spending yes. to at least the national average. Yes. At this time, I'm honored to introduce to you an NCAE colleague, Tamika Kelly Walker, who is a music teacher from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Tamika Walker Kelly, and I am an elementary music specialist at Morganton Road Elementary School in Fayetteville. But affectionately, I'm known to my students as their music teacher. I use the term specialist for a number of reasons, some of which I will share with you today. I am a curriculum specialist. I educate students in a specialized curriculum, like many of my colleagues in art, dance, physical education, and world languages. These classes and skills are core subjects that stand with and integrate with other core subjects to teach college and career readiness. For my third grade students who can recognize fractions because they can divide whole notes into half notes, for the fifth grade student who can explain force and motion because they're practicing that concept with volleyball skills, and for the fourth grader who is studying North Carolina landscapes to sketch them in art class, these classes are a necessity in teaching the whole student. Yeah. Yeah. However, the factor that makes these specials, well, special, mm -hmm. is that these classes are the hub of creativity and life in a school. Yes. These classes allow for our students to find other pathways to success. They provide a safe space for our students to learn and grow into their uniqueness as a citizen in our global community. I have watched a student blossom by participating in my music classes from kindergarten to fourth grade to become a soloist at our fall concert. I have listened to one of my students stand on a stage in front of our Fayetteville community and say that the musical experiences she received helped her believe that dreams really do come true. I am not alone in experiencing these moments with students. Many of my colleagues can tell you similar stories. However, these moments exist because of the strong programs at the elementary level. Our award-winning artists, writers, musicians, and athletes exist because of the foundational skills taught, but most importantly, the talent encouraged and supported in these classes. If House Bill 13 is not passed, our students stand to lose these classes. Ernest Boyer states that the quality of civilization can be measured through its music, dance, drama architecture, visual art and literature, we must give our children knowledge and understanding of civilization's most profound works. 
we here in North Carolina must give our students the opportunity to learn and explore the arts to benefit our schools, our community, and our state. If we truly value these curriculums in our classrooms, then we strongly call on the Senate to take up and pass House Bill 13. Save our classes, support our students, and pass House Bill 13. Thank you, Tamika. Now I'm very privileged to introduce Michelle Anderson, a parent of a kindergartner in Orange County to talk about the importance of passing House Bill 13. Michelle? This is an honor today to be here. I want to speak to the importance of teachers' assistance and special area teachers in our public schools. My son attends kindergarten in a public school in Orange County. He also attended public pre-K in Orange County last year. I want to share about his pre-K experience so that people who aren't in schools might have a sense of the importance of teachers' assistance. My son was four last year. He has significant developmental delays that impact his motor planning and his speech and language. He has sensory processing disorder and ADHD. The impact of these delays is that he needs multiple therapies and significant support so that he can learn and that those around him can also learn. We work hard with him at home and in our outpatient therapies, but despite all of these efforts, he's gone through some difficult periods at school. Last year, the support that he got from his teacher's assistant was critical to his success. We were fortunate to have two really wonderful teacher's assistants in his classroom. One in particular was asked to provide him with the support that he needed to engage in more pro-social interactions with his peers and to curtail his negative impulsive behaviors. She did this through responding in the moment, but also she did it by strategically planning activities that would help advance his pro-social skills. At pickup time, I could always see her patience and the love that she had for him and the way that she interacted with him and encouraged the very best in him. He had a very skilled teacher, but as skilled as she was, she would not have been able to be successful in her work with the other students, many of whom had other special needs that also deserved her attention, if she hadn't had the support of her teacher's assistance. On the last day of school, I attended a program in his classroom. As parents and students enjoyed refreshments, I was surprised to see that there were kids who wanted to get together outside of school with my son. Even though even though the teacher had told me that he had friends and he was doing okay, I was moved to tears to actually see it. When teachers have support, they can handle challenging students by attempting to understand them and help them to acquire new skills rather than just punishing them without understanding the source of the trouble. That's right. Somehow, with the support of his teacher and her two assistants, and despite his learning and behavioral challenges, that pre-K team had created a caring community where all students could learn and learn how to be a friend. These are the schools our students deserve. We need to pass House Bill 13. Yes. All right. Woo! But I got more to say. This, this, year, this year I can see again how my son and his classmates benefit from a strong team in their classroom. New elementary school, new team, still important. Excellent teaching takes a team. In my son's school this year, I see how the special area teachers function as an integral part of the school community, not op optional add-ons. My son adores his teachers and his teacher's assistants this year. He's vocal in his love for them, and I do too. He goes to school excited to learn every day, despite the big challenges in his path. The love, creativity, and enthusiasm that his special area teachers bring to their work in the school community are an important part of why he loves school. The special area teachers bring learning to life through art, music, foreign language, and physical education. My son, due to his special needs, has a high need to move. His outpatient therapists have noted how much better regulated he is and how much better he can access the language centers of his brain when he has a chance to move his body in the right ways. So the extrasensory experiences that are made possible by teacher's assistance within his classroom and the movement that he gets in PE are cornerstones of his educational program, not add-ons. Mm -hmm. But brain research is showing us all that students learn better when they move. We all do. These are the schools that our students deserve. Yes. Beyond the classes that they teach to all of the students in the school, I have seen the special area teachers at his school pitching in to help other teachers in their classrooms after school 
and taking lead roles in PTA fundraising, carpool duty, the readathon, and so much more. I see how they work together, sharing teaching strategies and information about how they have found success with a particular student so that all on their team can experience the same success. During the readathon, I noticed that the special area teachers had often made multiple contributions to the website where recorded chapters of teachers reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory were, were available for viewing. At my son's school, during the readathon, the entrance hallway was transformed into the chocolate room from Willy Wonka's factory. <laughs> Special area teachers were often stationed at the end of the hallway in costume, joyfully welcoming the children to school. This went on for about a month. <laughs> the presence of these teachers and the magical entry that they created for their students sticks with me as an image that embodies how the work in our school makes school a place where my son, a kid with significant learning disabilities and challenges, wants to be. These are the schools our students deserve. We need to pass House Bill 13 now. Thank you, Michelle, for that powerful message and that, that powerful show right here of a mother and her beautiful children. Finally, I am honored to ask another friend and colleague, Ariel Hoggerth, a teacher from Alamance County to make remarks about the need of, for student resources. Ariel? Good afternoon. My name is Ariel Hogarth. I'm a 12-year social studies teacher at Eastern Alamance High School in Mebane, North Carolina. I also serve on the board of directors at the North Carolina Association of Educators and the local president for the Alamance Burlington Association of Educators. I am proud to stand here today with other educators and public school advocates who believe the future of our state hinges on the future of public education. That's right. As public school educators, we look at our students every day and we know that they are our future. We work tirelessly to educate the children of North Carolina and prepare them for their future. They are not subjects, they are not products, they are children, and yes. they are the reason yes. that we children. come to school every day. But far too often, we are asked to do more with less. Our students are expected to score higher and analyze deeper with limited resources. Yes. Our students are being denied opportunities and resources that impact their success. North Carolina must raise the per pupil expenditure. Right. Yes. Throughout the state, local school systems are having to find creative ways to save money. In the triad, a local school limited energy uses by turning off the air conditioning on summer weekends. The result was moldy classrooms, moldy textbooks, and moldy desks. Some districts choose to administer end of course tests online because it saves money. Any educational psychologist would state it is not a best practice for our students to learn all year with paper and pencil and then perform on a test on a computer. Local districts should not be forced to save money at the expense of our children's education. Science classrooms throughout the state go without performing hands-on labs. There seems to not be enough money for lab supplies. Science challenges young minds to change the world around them, yet they're being denied opportunities and resources to experience real science. Donors choose and GoFundMe accounts are becoming more frequent because we will stop at nothing to give our students the best education. But, but this is not how it should be done. We expect our legislators to fully fund public education. are vital to the success of every right. child, as we've heard. Yeah. For years, we have experienced the decline of teacher assistance at all levels. We are not able to do right by our children when there are 38 freshmen in a world history classroom and almost half of them have special academic needs. We are not able to do right by our children when there are 28 third graders in a class without a full-time teacher's assistant. That one teacher works as hard as they can to provide the best education possible but North Carolina should provide the opportunity for more inclusion classrooms to meet the needs of every child. 
in eastern North Carolina. An elementary teacher spends almost a thousand dollars a year of her own money for her own classroom. She spends money on books for the diverse learners in her classroom. She purchases online digital resources and apps on her personal iPad for her students because there aren't always enough computers for every child. She also spends money on tissues and Clorox wipes because they're not available at the school and it's a tough play it's a tough burden to place on the parents to have to provide tissues and Clorox wipes. It is a constitutional duty of our General Assembly to fund and provide a quality public education for every child. As educators we will persevere and we will find yes. every way possible to provide for our students. Although some are concerned that if we keep doing this, the General Assembly will never fully fund public education. Well, legislators, we're here. And it is obvious that we value the education of children and the future of North Carolina. Do you? We will continue to work hard day in and day out for our students, but know this, we expect you to do the same. Uphold your constitutional duty to fully fund public education. Right here, right now, raise the per pupil expenditure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Ariel, for those powerful remarks. To close, I want to announce that NCAE will be organizing a week of action during National Teacher Appreciation Week, which begins on May 7th. During that week, we will uh, hold walk-ins before and after school to demonstrate the importance of public schools in our communities. Educators will also be coming to Raleigh that Wednesday to meet with their lawmakers and a number of our local affiliates will be working with other community members to hold legislative forums in their district to highlight the kinds of public schools that all of our students deserve. Yes. Lastly, I do think it is important to recognize that this is a one year anniversary today of the passage of the discriminatory House Bill 2. Ooh. All of our students deserve schools that are welcoming. Recent research points to the increase of school bullying over the last few years of gay, bisexual, and yeah. transgender students. That bullying hurts school attendance and academic performance, and it also increases drastically the risk of suicide attempts. House Bill 2 goes against NCAE's core values of equality for every individual, and we urge full repeal immediately. Thank you. Yeah.